As I mentioned in the first video, every week we'll study a little bit about sign languages, how their phonology works, how their syntax works, and so forth. But we need to start with some myths about sign languages that are very common and that we need to take care of before we begin. The very first myth is that sign language is somehow English, but with your hands, that each sign corresponds to a word in English. And what they're essentially, and what an introvert is essentially doing is transforming the words in English into an equivalent sign. This is not the case. Sign languages are not a reproduction of a spoken language. They are full languages with their own grammar and with their own lexicon, with their own words. This is just a very brief example. The language mostly used in the United States is called American Sign Language, ASL. And this is an example of a clear difference in morphology between ASL and English. In English, when you want to um, say the tense of a verb, I worked, I will work, you use uh, some morpheme, for example, work could, will work, attached to it. In ASL, you also use a morpheme, but this is the position of your torso relative to your center. So verbs that are uh, that refer to the past are said with the torso bent slightly backwards. Verbs that have to do with the future, that have the future tense, are set with the torso slightly bent forward, as you can see in the very slowly playing gifs that we have there. So both the verbs in English and in ASL work by having the verbal root and then some addition. In ASL, it would be the position of the torso. But as you can see, this is not just uh, a sign for work and a sign for past, for example. So ASL has its own grammar that is very different from that of English. This is another example. Um, this is a sentence from the sign language of the Netherlands. In English, it will be, as for Inga, the boy, the boy is visiting her. The order of the signs in the sign language of the Netherlands is Inga, her, boy, him, he visits her. As you can see, this is very different from the Dutch. What Inga betreft, den jongen is by haar op bezoek. What Inga regards, the boy is by her on visit. So as you can see, there's n practically no correspondence between the signs in the Dutch sign language and the words in Dutch. Likewise, there's no correspondence between words in an English sentence and the order of an ASL sentence. ASL is a full language and a different language from English. A second myth that exists is that there's only one sign language that everyone uses. This is not the case. There are hundreds of sign languages and as you can see there's different sign languages one that started in France, one that started in the US, and there's many more around the world, including some languages that are isolated that have no other related sign languages. So people in different places use different sign languages and they can't uh, communicate with one another if they don't learn the language of the other person, same as with spoken languages. A third myth about sign languages is that somehow they're just mimicking or pantomimes of objects. This is not true. Uh, for example, take a look at these words. They are I iconic. I will tell you what that is in a moment. They're supposed to imitate the shape of something in the real world. But what are they imitating? They both mean the same. What do you think they mean? It'll be clear once I tell you, but you can't just guess from their config from seeing them. They mean cat. The German sign language imitates the whiskers, uh, expanding them like this. And the Swedish sign language uh, imitates the action of petting. But you can understand what they mean only in retrospect. When you look at them, they 
are inspired by some aspect of the physical world, but they're not really imitations of what a cat is. Likewise with these signs. Uh, there's one in ASL, one in Danish sign language, and the other one in Chinese sign language. What do these words mean? They all mean the same. They mean tree in the language, in these languages. The ASL probably imitates the motions of the fluttering of the leaves, the Danish one the shape, and the third one the trunk. We can recognize what they mean only in, re in retrospective. They are inspired in aspects of the natural world, but they are not directly interpretable as visual signs. This is what we mean by iconicity. They have some resemblance, but they are still arbitrary signs. They're still words. Spoken language has this. There's a kind of word called an onomatopoeia, which is supposed to resemble the sound of things in the real world. For example, woof is supposed to be the way uh, dogs sound in English. But likewise, these are not perfect imitations of how uh, a dog sounds. If I tell you that there's a Turkish word hev, there's no way that you could guess that it means woof in Turkish. You would need to know because hev is not uh, a barking. It's a word that is supposed to remind you of how barking sounds, but it is an arbitrary word. This is what we mean by iconicity. It has some resemblance, but it is still a sign that is arbitrary and you, that you have to learn as a word. So sign language imitates the shape of objects in the same way that onomatopoeias imitate the sounds of animals. Maybe it gets some inspiration for them, but in the end, they are words. There's a four myth, which is that sign language is only done with your hands, which is not true. There's a whole signing space around you, uh, which people use. And it includes, for example, your lips and your eyebrows. This example is from British Sign Language. As you can see on the left, there's two words, battery and uncle. And the difference between those two words is in the way you configure your, your lips. One is a closed lip and closed and spread. And the other one is an open mouth. Likewise with the example on the right. These are two signs that are performed uh, with the same hand motions, but in one, the lips are spread and closed, and the other one, the lips are pursed forward. So these signs involve your hands and your lips. So knowing this, I ask you, can someone make smart gloves to translate, for example, ASL, in, ASL into English? The answer is no. You need to look at your hands, at the hands of someone saying something in ASL, but also at their eyebrows, at their mouth, as we mentioned with the conjugation of verbs in ASL, at the configuration of their torso, so gloves won't cut it. And as a matter of fact, if we wanted a computer to understand ASL, we would need a camera that deciphers the motions of all of these parts so that it, an artificial intelligence could recognize those words. As a quick summary, I do want to reiterate that sign languages are full languages. They're not just imitations of English, for example. Sign languages have their own grammar and their own vocabulary. And there's hundreds of sign languages around the world. They're spoken with hands, but also with other parts of your body, such as your lips and your eyebrows. So if someone tries to sell you uh, ASL gloves, they're, nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> During the quarter, we're going to learn a lot more about how sign languages are structured and uh, about their linguistics, how to describe them.